we're going to look at how to solve systems of equations using augmented matrices. First we need to review the matrix row operations. These are ways we can change the matrix without actually changing the solution to the system of equations we've put into the matrix. matrix. First, any two rows of the matrix can be interchanged. They can switch places. Second, the numbers in any row can be multiplied by any real number except for zero. And third, we can multiply any real number by a row, then add what we get to the numbers in another row. This will make more sense once we see an example. I have the system of equations 5x plus 2y equals 8, and 3x minus y equals 7. First I'll have to put that into an augmented matrix. And do that by lining up the x terms, the y terms, and the constants, and just taking the coefficients, in this case 5, 2, 3, and it's like there's a negative 1 times that y. And then the, drawing this line, which is what makes it an augmented matrix, and that is, uh, lines up with the equal signs. Then I have 8 and 7. So I've created an augmented matrix using this system of equations. My next step is to use the matrix row operations to get the matrix into row echelon form, which for a 2 by 3 matrix looks like this. In the first row, in the first column, we have a 1. First row, second column, a 0. Second row, first column, a 0 and second row, second column, a 1. And then the numbers on the other side of the line, which represents the equal sign, can be anything. I'm going to start with trying to get the 5 to be a 1, this first place here. Now I know I can multiply by any number other than 0. So if I multiply 5 by 1 fifth, I can get it to be 1. So I'll do that. So when I multiply those out, 5 times 1 fifth is 1, 2 times 1 fifth, we'll just write 2 fifths, 8 times 1 fifth, we'll have to write 8 fifths. So I have this augmented matrix. So I've copied my matrix again over here. Now I'm going to use the third matrix row operation to get the 3 to be a 0. I'm going to take the 3, and I'm going to add to it the row, number from the row above, 1, times any real number. In this case, negative 3 is what will work because 3 plus 1 times negative 3 is going to be 0, which is what I'm aiming for. So I'll do that with the next terms as well. We have negative 1 plus 2 fifths times negative 3. And the two-fifths came from the line above. And then I have 7 plus 8-fifths times negative 3. I still have an 8-fifths up here. So this one simplifies to 1, 0, two-fifths, negative eleven-fifths, eight-fifths, and positive eleven-fifths. Now we still need that two-fifths to be a zero and that negative eleven-fifths to be a one. I'll start with the negative eleven-fifths. Cancel out the negative 11, one, 11 fifths and make it positive 1. I'll multiply by negative 5 elevenths. So that's going to be the matrix 1, 2 fifths, 8 fifths, 0, 1, negative 1. So we have this matrix. And we're still not quite yet in row echelon form because that two fifths should be a zero. So I'm going to use the third matrix row operation. And I need to somehow add negative two fifths or subtract two fifths. So I'm allowed to 
add the number below times something. The number below is 1 now. So 1 times negative 2 fifths, negative 2 fifths when added to 2 fifths is going to be 0. So that's what I'm going to use. And I have to do the same thing here, except I'm just adding 0 times something. So I don't even need to write it. Here I do need to write it because I have 8 fifths plus negative 1 times negative 2 fifths. So that will leave me with the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, 8 fifths plus 2 fifths is going to be 10 fifths or 2. We're left with negative 1 down there. So what this tells us is that x equals 2 and y equals negative 1. Because this column, remember, was the x column, this column was the y column, the augment line is the equal sign, and then these are the constants. So I have x plus 0 equals 2, and y equals negative 1. So that leaves me with the point 2, negative 1.